Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. As I said in the previous video, at the beginning of April, I was in England, and there I talked to Lawrence Dickey. And in that first video, I talked about his tapered tube technology. Now, I said at the end of that, there's more to talk about because there is. A tapered tube can be implemented quite easily behind a tweeter, behind a mid-range, but when it comes to the base, it's a little more difficult. But Lawrence, the wild and original thinker he is, found a way. Here is what he had to say. So Lawrence, in a previous video, we showed why you'd want a taper tube. Quickly show the effect of the taper tube. Okay, so you can hear the resonances of the tube. I put the taper tube on and the resonances disappear. That was a technology that we used right from the beginning of Vivid Audio on our B1 loudspeaker, but we only used it on the mid-range and the tweeter, the two dome drivers. Acoustically, the elliptical cabinet was just a chamber with a vent. Because you need a really big tube for a woofer, right? Well, if you were to do, uh, as in the old Nautilus, a completely exponentially loaded base, yes, it does have to be quite big. But one of the lessons in reality that uh, Philip made me understand was that um, base reflex, really, for our early products, base reflex was the right way to go. It's a great uh, balance between uh, size and base extension. So that first B1, as I say, traditional base, re base reflex, but when it came to the, what was to be the new flagship, the gear, the G1 gear, I was determined that we should find a way of using exponential tube absorption and base reflex in the, in the same. All, not just on the mid-range and tweet. Exactly. Yep, yep. And uh, so, yeah, you could say the inventive step was to realize that with an appropriate choice of, um, cutoff frequency you could actually combine the two to get the best of both worlds okay and so i have a little demonstration here this can... represents the cabinet i understand that's right can you so, explain that right oh you need, uh, that. I need that um so this represents the air volume in the cabinet and this which is interestingly enough known as a fiddle which is common to you know classic uh, recorder um uh, you know the school Okay. Yeah, yeah, I played the recorder. Yeah, okay, well, it's exactly. You, you, you have the air jet, which plays on the um, the sharp edge, um, which causes a resonance. But the frequency of the resonance is determined by the volume of air in the chamber and the uh, size of that hole. Okay. And we, we start the dam. Um, I'll block the end here, and that represents just a simple seal. Uh, like a chamber. cabinet with a... Yeah. yeah. So I'll just blow gently into this. Oh, you could hear it go really. But as, yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's the fundamental which you hear, but as you blow a little harder, you can hear the overtones. Right. If I now put this absorber, you don't want those out of a mind. Well, that's exactly the fundamental. The yeah. yeah, you you want that that fundamental resonances, but the overtones. Yeah. Gone. So you can hear they they've gone. So again, the exponential absorber has completely got rid of those end-to-end -end resonances. So what you're demonstrating, this represents, in a small way, the cabinet on the yeah. gear, which is actually yeah. kind of the whole yeah. per tube, right? It, indeed, it is. Uh, the gear is effectively this, but we've curled the tube over. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Pleasure. So I want to finish this off by saying, when you look at a Vivid Audio speaker now, remember, the wild cabinet shape isn't really just an aesthetic thing. It's form following function and that function is it's a big taper tube it's really cool it's really clever and it makes vivid audio speakers unique but there's more to say about taper tubes because when it came to this loudspeaker he had to do something a little different until next time thank you for watching